In this session, I want to talk about feature in Azure SQL database, which is referred to as GeoReplication. So in my previous video, I've already explained how you can provision a GeoReplicated database for your primary uh, instance. Now, in this video, I want to take the next step and want to explain how you can utilize this secondary database. Because as we all know, when we provision this GeoReplicated secondary database, then in that case, uh, we have the primary database, which is always active, and that's what is directly connected to our applications as well. Now, the secondary database is available, which is getting replicated in real time. But in a nutshell, it is just sitting over there doing nothing apart from the replication process. And uh, if you have been uh, using SQL replication historically, then the, the, this was the same scenario over there as well, because once you create your uh, SQL replicated server, it was available for uh, any time being the primary, it was replicating the data in real time, but it was not utilized, like you were not allowed to utilize that secondary uh, replicated SQL replicated instance. And with Azure SQL, Microsoft came up with an idea of making this secondary also usable in some sense. Now, what they have done is you have this primary database where you can do read and write as for any conventional database. But with this secondary database, they have given you an opportunity where you can utilize this secondary database as a read only. Obviously, the write would not be a rational aspect to implement. And that's why they did, didn't do it, because otherwise it would create a conflict where you have two writes location. But read is totally normal because you can anytime, uh, any data which is um, which validates the asset properties is should be available in the secondary to read. So because uh, the, the benefit there, the, there are enormous benefit of having the secondary as a read only, because uh, you are, if we understand what we are doing when we are doing a geo replication, we are setting up a new instance. So take for an example, if your primary database is charging you around $200, uh, $200 or maybe a 2K every month, then your secondary is also getting you charged the same. And if that secondary is not utilized apart from just replication, then in that case, it's just a lot of money which is getting wasted. And um, obviously, it's not the right term to say wasted, but yeah, it's, it's not uh, you, you utilized or it's not usable until there is a disaster or any catastrophic uh, issues because only then you will turn on the secondary and start utilizing it. But uh, because of this uh, read-only uh, option available in secondary, you can utilize the secondary even when there is no uh, severe disaster state. And obviously, you can leverage these secondaries for a lot of purposes. So one of the scenario which I have tried to explain in the in the in the demo is uh, something like this. So I have a, a Azure SQL database which is uh, available in Australia East and I have a secondary database which uh, I have provisioned and this is a geo-replicated database. So any data which is entered in the primary automatically replicates to the secondary. Now what I've also done is I have created two applications. One is, uh, and, and these are just console app, uh, window form application. And one of the application has the capability of reading and writing the data into the database. And the other application is just for reading purposes. Now in a real world, if you can correlate this, you can build a web application. And if you have designed it well, then you can separate out your reads and write from, from uh, each other. And what that means is, take one example, I have a web application where I'm recording users. So all the users in my, uh, in my organization, I am asking them to register in that system. So user will have this primary application where they will go and create the records for you. Now you can have an administrative application on an administrative screen in the same application where the users who have registered would be viewed. Now, instead of connecting this uh, list, user list uh, screen to the same application, you can separate out it as a separate instance and then connect it to the separate database, which would be the secondary database and not connecting to the primary. There are a lot of benefits with, first you are reducing the load. Take for an example, if your read process is something like a Facebook wall. So you have millions of users who are not contributing at every minute, but they are definitely reading the data from your system. So in that case, separating out the reads is really vital. And uh, such sort of uh, scenarios, such sort of uh, uh, technology stack definitely helps in such scenarios. So, so let me show you the implementation. So I'll go back.
to this. So yeah, so this is my uh, application which I was talking about. So I have this read DB application web form which reads data and then I have a write DB application which can read and write the data into the database. So, okay, I'll just show you the infrastructure as well. So that's my uh, uh, Azure portal and I have created a resource group Azure SQL. I have two databases, uh, two database servers in that. If you see, that's a SQL server primary, that's a SQL server secondary. And I have two databases. Obviously, as I said in my previous video, you have to have the same names for the database in order to, for your application to be active and working. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my primary and uh, I'll go to Geo Replication. And as you can see over here, I have uh, two databases, uh, two different instances running, and they are in real time replicating the data into two different regions. So that's already active. I have pre-provisioned this in order to just save time because it takes some time to get the configuration stuff done. And as you can see over here, as the status says, it's on a, it's a primary database. So that's my primary server and it's uh, read and write, so that's why it says online, that's the secondary and it says it's only readable. So, and there are a couple of uh, more things which you can do. So you can do a force failover that will automatically switch to this and I'll do a separate video about uh, how you can do uh, geo replication as well as uh, failover and you can create a failover group and all that stuff. And you can even uh, deliberately stop replication if you want for any good or bad reason so that you can do as well. Going back to the application, um, I'll just show you. So these are the two databases, that's the primary and that's the secondary. I've connected this uh, particular uh, uh, query, uh, query window with the primary database. So that's, yeah, that's the primary. And if I run this query, I can see there are a couple of records in this table. So I have around 10 records in this table. Now, this is a query which basically tells if the database is locked and when we'll run this, we'll see a couple of records. And the reason being is because we have a connection which is done by this Visual Studio, or this uh, SQL Server Management Studio. So that basically locks, uh, creates a couple of locks. So we have four to five locks available over here. So there's, uh, I'm just showing this so that when we initiate our application, that would create locks and that would go mostly in hundreds of locks. Now, this application, if I'll, just show you the designer. So that's my write uh, DB application. Uh, I can write, I can provide number of records and then I can create a write request over here. And then I have this uh, simulation option which where I can simulate a deadlock. And I'll show you the query how you can simulate a deadlock. I have also created a update on deadlock. So once I have simulated a deadlock, I just wanted to show that I cannot write or update any record in the database table. And that's why once I have once I will simulate the uh, the instance database instance with the deadlock, then I will basically try to update the record, and that should basically just hung up till the uh, deadlocks are not released. Now on the read side, if we go to the designer, so this is just a simple uh, read application. So there's no create options. Uh, what what we'll see over here on the top, we'll see a list of all the records which are there in the table. So by default, it will show 10 records. And then there is a trigger which runs every five seconds and that will basically create a request to the database and get any new record which are created. So this is just reading the record. So the thing which we will observe in this would be that once I simulate the deadlock and updates and everything, uh, any record uh, creation or updation gets just blocked still our read would be able to execute and get the records from the database without any issues. And it would not show any exception for them. And that's the beauty of separating out the reads from write. So because we are connecting our read to a secondary database instance and write to the primary. So if the write locks the primary database, we are secondary is totally available to read the data. In a general situation, if your database tables are locked, then in that case, your read and write both starts failing. And I'll just show you the connections. So if you see over here, that's my secondary instance, which I'm connecting to the read DB. And that's my write uh, DB class. And if I come over here, uh, I'm connecting it to my primary. So there are no smoking mirrors. These are the connection strings. Now, in order to show you how I'm executing a deadlock, 
uh, this is the query which I'm executing. So what I'm doing is I'm creating an update within a while loop, and then I am basically creating an update table with a table lock, and that would basically just freeze the table uh, with a lock state. So now let me run the application and uh, I'll just keep things side by side. So I'll just run this and let me grab the, so that's my read DB application and this is my write application. So now if I come over here and if you'll see there are a couple, there should be a couple of more locks. Okay, so eventually when I start the simulation, it will show some locks. Over here, you can see there are 10 records. In the read application also, I'm seeing 10 records which are coming from the secondary database. Over here, if you see, uh, there are requests and responses which are uh, going through. So there is a request which started at 1249 uh, which is just now, and then we got a response back at 12:49 in one, I think so, almost one second. So every every I think so every uh, four seconds we make a request to the secondary database and get the number of records. So what I'll do is I'll show you that yeah, if I'll add one more record to the primary. So this is my primary database connection. So it uh, basically tried to insert a record and. Uh, yeah, insert record attempted 01. So it has initiated that. Hopefully in the next refresh, we should see. So now there should be 11 records. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So initially there were 10 records, now we have 11. So even if we come to the database and if we run the records, we have a new entry, which is this 11th record. So all looks good. The When we create a record, we are getting a new record in the update as well. And if we want to just revalidate, so now we should have 12th record if we initiate that. And uh, hopefully if we run this, so we should get a 12th record. So we have a 12th record. And if we see over here, our list is all full now over here. It's no more blank spaces. And our update is running seamless. So we, this is the 25th request. It started and ended all good. Now what I'll do is I'll simulate a deadlock. So when I'll click this, it will basically initiate a deadlock situation. Now, if I come back to my deadlock query, and if I run this, you can see over here, I have 93 locks. So at the same time, I'll quickly try to update a couple of records. And if you, as you can see, it's just frozen because our database is not responding. Now, the thing which we need to uh, visualize and see is this read application. It's still running seamless without any issues. There are no errors. It's going to get the next record. So it's got the record uh, request number 33. It again, and that's the 34. No issues. Deadlock is still, yeah, deadlock was there. Now it is released. But our read application is not experiencing any issues. Now, if I go back to this query window, so you can see the deadlocks are released. Uh, it's a very quick process. It's, it was very hard to simulate it, but yeah, uh, um, I've tried to simulate it somewhere. So let's rerun this so that we can get a better understanding. So what I'll do is I'll simulate a deadlock. And as soon as I do that, if I run this query, my 93 rows are uh, locked. Uh, if I create this update, it's not happening. But if I come back to my read application, it is 41 and now it's 42. So it's just going seamless without any issues. It's still getting all the data. It's still getting everything without any exception or any problem with the lock which is happening on the primary database. So primary database is affected. Secondary is just working fine. So this sort of things would definitely help in a situation where your reads in the application are separated out and it are, it, those are connected to the secondary database. And uh, all the users who are seeing the, something like a Facebook wall, the user will never even experience any issue when they are scrolling through the wall, although the users who might be creating the content would be impacted. And obviously the team can work on that and fix that. But your wider audience, which would be the readers, they are never impacted and they are working as they are working seamlessly through the secondary database. So if I come back to my log query and if I run this, yeah, everything has been released, so all good. 
So yeah, this was uh, this was a simulated sample which I wanted to show how you can use the secondary geo replicated secondary database in a real world scenario with applications, and uh, it, you can leverage it and just not keep it for disaster situations, but also you can use it for the active uh, application utilization for a read scenarios and all that stuff. Hopefully you liked the video. What I'll do is I'll be doing a couple of more videos on using uh, uh, geo replication with uh, availability groups and all that stuff. But yeah, keep keep an eye on the videos and thanks a lot for watching. Thank you very much.